now that we know he's able, let's tell the Lord that we need him.
It is so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I want to welcome you to be seated. I want to welcome everyone for those who join us online, streaming with us. We're so glad to have you this morning. Man, look around. It's so good to be back amongst brethren, isn't it? Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. Give God a hand this morning. It's so good to be in the house. It says, how good it is for brethren to dwell together, to come together. And so after service today, we're going to have a little fellowship out back in the Pimbley area. We're going to do a little barbecue. Because if uh, there's one thing I know is we do real well is we can talk. And we can eat some good food. Amen. So right after service, stick around for a little bit. Get to know your church. Get to know some of the other folks. And, uh, you know, we're practicing social distance. We're going to have a mask out back. We have hand sanitizers. Ask for a mask if you're social, socializing close up. But we want to change that word. We were talking this week. We were like, man, social distance. we got to socialize. We can be distanced, but we can still talk. So we're still socially. So we're going to just drop the social. And what, what was that we're going to call it again? Physical distancing. So get your physical distance on. You know, get your physical distance. But socialize. Talk. We need each other. We need to be encouraged. We need someone to walk with us as we're going through this time. And there's a lot that's going on with this uh, corona situation. But we are grateful that God is still in control. He is still on the throne this morning, still delivering, still healing, and still saving men and women if we will just answer the call and just come. Amen? So real quick this morning, we're going to be talking about uh, renewing our mind, putting off the old self and putting on the new self. Now, when I was little, there was this song that we used to sing that says, I am a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. All things are becomes new. And I never understood that. So I thought, well, if I give my life to God, he's going to make me in this brand new person. Thank God, because I'm crazy. But then I got saved and I realized, it's still me. What's going on, God? Did I really get saved? Because I didn't become this brand new man that we've been singing about. I'm still Donovan. You know, I'm still me. But then as I begin to go into the word of God, I begin to see that God began, Peter, Paul began to talk and he began to share with the believers and he began to tell them something. He said, we have to put off. And that literally is where we comes in. We have to do something when we give our life to God. You know, if I go to the store right now to go buy a jacket, I'm not going to just keep my old jacket on and then put the, old ja the new jacket over the old jacket. Do we do that? No. no. For the gentleman in the room, when you go shopping with your wife, if that was the case, or your, you know, the lady, it would have been easy. Everybody would go shopping with the young ladies, right? Because they would just put on and walk right out. But they got to take off. They got to put on. They got to take off. They got to put on. And then two hours later, take off, put on. It's a process. And guess what, folks? It's the same way when we give our life to Christ. It's a process. It's a journey. We have to take off and begin to put on the new self. And it's, it's still you. But God is changing you on the inside, and it begins to radiate out. And so this morning, that's what I want us to look at this morning, putting off the old self. Um, you know, so we see Paul talking and sharing this, and we want to just kind of just begin to look at ourselves this morning and say, how do I put off? Am I putting off those old things as a new creation, as a new creature in Jesus Christ? Amen? But to understand... The old man, the new man. We need to understand the baptism. When we talk about water baptized after we got saved, or we are dipped in the water, which symbolizing us dying, as Jesus died and raising to newness in life. So we have to be. We have to understand what takes place when we give our life to Christ. Paul says, you know, it's a struggle. He said, I still fight because the things that I want to do, I don't do. But the things that I don't want to, there's a little struggle going on there. And so we have to pray. We have to be in the word of God. We have to change our mindset. And it's not some practice or some stuff that we do. But it's the internal stuff that the Holy Spirit does as we yield to the spirit of God. Amen. So let's turn in our Bible to Ephesians uh, 4. And now we're going to read a little bit in verse 17. So let's um, Ephesians 4 and verse 17.
when you finally say amen, so we know they're, you're there, if you need us to wait, say, hold a minute, hold on a minute. It's going to be in your bulletin, and it will also be up on the screen. So Ephesians 4, 17, so Paul here is talking to the Gentile, he was um, talking to the folks, and he said, so I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, the family, the, fruit, the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. Having lost all sense, all sensuality, they have given themselves over to impurity with no continual lust for more. And so Paul is talking this morning and he's using some words there. And if we look up those words and we see what he's talking about, he's talking about people just giving over. When we get to that place where, you know, the Gentiles, where they were at that place where it was all kind of crazy sexual immorality. That's a word sensual means. He's talking about a sexual impurity. And they would just go with anything. Now, he wasn't just talking to folks who were not believers. He was talking to people who were believers. And he was encouraging them and talking to them about the life that they came out of. The things that used to be in the past. And he's telling them to walk away from that. So putting off the old person is more than just putting off old practice. He's talking to them about these things. But he's telling them that it's not just old practice that you got to put off. Because we know folks who, can, who are good people because they don't do certain things. But they're not saved. We know people who are not going to do crazy or talk. They don't curse. They, they, they give. They serve. And they're good in a sense of moral values. But they're not saved. So practice alone doesn't. But practice makes perfect. And when we begin to practice in our minds, to renew our minds through the word of God, when we begin to apply those things, then change begins to take place in our hearts. Because the heart is where the issue is. The heart, that is what the change is going to take place. When we begin to catch the vision, when we begin to see God as he is, when we begin to catch that, our hearts begin to transform. And it begins to transform out. And then we can begin to see. And just like when we put on those clothes, we take off. We got to take off the jacket. We got to take off the old stuff. It's the same way in God. And so that leads me to my first point this morning that I want us to look at. And that is uh, putting off the old self, putting off the old self, putting off bitterness, putting off anger, putting off slander, malice, putting off all those things that cause division and separation. Even right here in the body of Christ, put off those things. And that's what the Bible said. When we have an issue, we need to go and talk with each other, work it out. So we're not just you know, going to another person, but we are doing that. And that's part of the change of taking off. We're not doing those things that we normally do. Last week, Pastor Jeff was talking about um, clothes, and he talks about taking the vengeance to release that. You see, when we begin to put off the whole man, that's one of those things we put it off is vengeance. You know, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. We want to we wanna, we wanna recompense our own. We want to get our revenge when someone hurts us. But he's telling us to put those things off. And so one of those is releasing so we can be able to forgive. We can forgive where we can be able to heal. The hardest part of the healing process is the forgiving process because we don't want to let go because we just feel like, well, the person is not going to get the just what they need to get that I think they should get. But then we got to look at ourselves, and we got to be reminded that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that you and I, we can be forgiven, we can be saved, we can be healed. He's not giving us that anger, that vengeance, that wrath that we deserve. He's showing us mercy. And it's the same way in our lives today. We have to be the same way when we begin to put off. We put off those old habits. We put off those old things that we used to do. And some of those include stop doing things that we used to do, going to places we used to go, hanging around certain people that we used to hang around. We have to make some changes. There's no way you can come in contact with Jesus Christ and change doesn't take place in your life. Something is going to happen. Either it's going to be good or it's going to be bad, but something is going to happen. You're going to be called to make a decision. Either you're going to change or you're going to continue 
down the road that you're going. But you will, you must make a decision once you come in contact with Jesus Christ. And as believers, those who are called, those of us who said we've been saved, we have to. People have to start seeing changes in our life. There's no way you can be praying and reading your Bible and coming to church and nothing is happening in your life. I'm telling you, folks, you come a hold of Jesus. The Bible says that the woman said, if I could just touch. She said, if I could just touch, I will be healed. Faith, you have to believe it. Because there's something else that's going to tell. The devil is going to tell you, you are still Donovan. I'm still me. I'm still this Jamaican guy that's crazy. The devil is going to tell you that. You are still so-and-so. And that's where you have to get into the word of God and remind yourself that says, yes, but God has transformed me. He has forgiven me. He has saved me. He has healed me. And that's when we can begin to take off, take off these bitterness, take off the anger, take off the wrath, take off the malice. We can begin to take off a lot of these things that cause us not to grow in Christ. We can take off the old. We can begin to lay aside those things that Paul is talking about and telling them, telling them about. Let's look at verse 20 real quick. It says, that however, it is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him according to, accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regards to your former way of life. So that's supposed to be in the past. He's telling your former when we use the word farmer, it means in the past. It's no longer. So he's telling them that as a new creation, as this new believer, as someone who's taking off these things, those are supposed to be the farmer life. So we're supposed to be going a different way. People said, you've got to make a 360. Well, if you make a 360, folks, you turn around, you back right where you are. You're still in that mess. You've got to take that 180 to make some change. You can't do that 360, folks. If you do a 360, you're right back where you started, and there's no change. But in Jesus Christ, you got to make a turn. you got to turn. And he said, he continued on, he said, with regards to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires. See, sometimes I learned a while back when I was in Iraq to check my heart. Why am I doing what I'm doing? What is the motive behind it? Why am I giving? Why am I serving? Why am I so committed to this or that? Why am I involved with it? Sometimes if we look at the underlying heart, the motive, people do stuff sometimes, and the motive behind it is for what they can get. It's for what they can get or what they're trying to accomplish, how they're trying to guide it or lead it into a certain direction. And people do stuff sometimes with a good heart, but the intention behind it is evil. And so he's talking about this deceit, being deceitful and corrupted. And he said, put off those old things. See, um... We do it because, you know, people said, I love you. And folks said, yeah, we, we, we throw that around so much. We hear that so much, don't we? Especially in the church, we hear it a lot. You know, God bless you. Love you, brother. Love you, sister. You know, we hear that. And sometimes I ask myself, how can you love me and you're mad at me and you won't even come talk to me? How can you say, I love you, but if we have an issue, you won't even come to me and say, hey, because, you know, family goes through it. We are a body of believers. We're family. And, you know, just like your family and my family at Thanksgiving, there's some disagreement around the Thanksgiving table. The turkey's wandering. When, am I gonna, when are you guys going to start eating the turkey because you guys are arguing? It's the same way in the church, in the body of Christ. We argue. We don't always agree and see eye to eye and everything. But one thing we always agree on is the word of God and that Jesus is still in control. We might not agree with some of the theological uh, aspect of certain things or how we do certain things with tradition but we have to agree that Jesus Christ is and he was and he is to come we have to agree that this he is the only one we have to agree that we have to take off our own self we have to agree that we must make some change you know when we become a new a new a, a Christian when we begin to take off these things when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior like I said earlier, everything doesn't just stop. and Everything doesn't just change, you know. There are people that come to Jesus Christ and like that. They cut certain things. If they used to drink, they quit drinking, smoke, they quit smoking. But then there's other folks who it takes time. It takes time. And so all of us, all of us in this room, we have stuff that we're struggling with in our Christian journey, in our walk. 
and God is still working on us. Some of us, we are, we are getting along, but some of us, you know, I tell folks, my life is like 25. It's just like, man, is this thing going to ever get finished? It seems like every time you look around, they block off another section of 25 and new work starts. But that's how some of our lives are. It's on the construction. God is working. He is working on us, and we are changing little by little. But for some folks, we just walk in, and we hear the word of God, and we accept it, and just like that, they give it all up. We see that with Paul. Paul said, what would you have me do, Lord? And he never looked back. But regardless of where you're at, we have to take off the old self. We have to lay aside those things Unfortunately, Paul reminds us that even after we receive Christ, even when we're trying to take off that old man, that old self is going to pop up. It's going to be constant. And that's what that struggle that I mentioned earlier, he talks about, that struggle, that inward struggle, when I want to do right. Therefore, as a Christian, we must do our part. We must to put off the old self, to be guided by the Holy Spirit. And as we let the Holy Spirit guide us, and lead us, we begin to put on the new self. So we begin to put on the new self. Let's uh, continue reading verse 23. He said, to be made new in the attitude of your mind and to put on the new self created to be like Christ. In righteousness and holiness, therefore each of you must put off falsehood He's talking about put off lying, put off misleading, put off those things, and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body, and in your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. You know, we have our, each week here we have devotion in the office before we start, and this week, after we had devotion, we were talking about something, and we were talking about foothold. And, we were, and I was showing the, the office staff what foothold really is. You know when someone is pushing the door, you're trying to close the door, and they stick their foot right there, and you can't close the door, can't you? And then they keep fighting, and they're stronger than you, and before you know it, the door starts open, and it's coming back. Well, you see, when we go out there and do things as believers, things that are not godly, guess what we're doing? We're giving the devil that little crack in the door. And little by little, we begin to get led. And it begins to grow. And it begins to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And before you know it, we start missing a service here and there. We start not talking to the brethren. And before we look, we see ourselves. We're back to the way of life before. Because it begins to take a hold of us. And we begin to put on the old things. And we have to catch ourselves sometime and say, man... I can't believe I just did that or I say that or that comes out. It's like, oh, man, that slipped out. You know, I, I was at work the other night and uh, I was trying to counsel this lady. She was stressed out. She was going through a lot and we were talking. And then she said, man, I'll tell you what, it was back in the days, you know. And she just uh, went off with it. And then she said, oh, pastor, I'm sorry. I said, no, you're good. Just speak. Just get it all out. Get it off your chest. Get it through your heart. Now we can go to God in prayer. Sometimes we don't realize that the people we hang around, the things that we hang around the most, it's going to be start manifest itself in us. And so if you're going to put on the new self, you have to put on new folks too. You have to begin to surround yourself with people that's going to lift you up, that's going to build you up, that's going to encourage you, that's going to speak the word of God into your life, that's going to share scriptures with you. If you're hanging around folks who are tearing down, and then guess what? It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be even harder for you to put on that new self. He said, anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. We don't, have to, we don't have to explain that. Just taking stuff that's not yours, stealing, right? We don't have to explain that. But he's, he's reminding them and he's telling them, this were the former life. This was the kind of person that we used to be. For, you know, for only by the grace of God. Now, He's calling these things out, and some of us have said, well, I haven't done that, I haven't done that, I haven't done that, I haven't done that. He may have not give you a list, a whole list, but if we begin to put ourselves in that verse right there, then we begin to see that we did stuff. And only by the grace of God that we are saved. But must work doing something useful with your own hands that they may be 
have something to share with those in need. So the new way of life, putting on that new self. You know, when you, when you go to the store, you take off that old jacket, you just drop it. But when you put on that new one, you know, you go in the mirror and you're, you're doing all of this and you, you know, and you know, for us guys, you know, we're like, man, you're dap, man, you're dapper, man, whoa. <laughs> you know, you come out on Sunday morning, you step out, you want to make sure that people see. You know, I know for the ladies, you know, you want to make sure that someone give you some kind of compliment. Hey, sis, I see you got your hair did. Especially husbands. My God, she got her hair did. She's got this new hairdo. And the husband doesn't even notice it. There's going to be some trouble in the Bronx. <laughs> There's going to be some trouble in the Bronx. And you know what? People notice it just the same. When you begin to put on that new self, people begin to notice that there's something taking place in your life. There's a transformation that can be seen. People begin to see the Spirit of God working in you. And they know. All throughout the gospel, we see people talk about these people have been with Jesus. We hear people that share about people. And even in our lives and our time, we hear people talk. You know, back in the days when I was growing up, on a Sunday or throughout the week, you know, if you see a lady in my culture from Jamaica, a lady have her hair undone. That means it wasn't perm. If a lady here wasn't perm, you already know she's a Christian. That was just the culture in Jamaica. If you see a lady with her hair not perm, you know she was a, she was a, she was a Christian. Because only Christian ladies didn't perm their hair. It was just that thing back in Jamaica. You know, if you have natural hair, you were a Christian. And that was just it. You know, if you're wearing a dress, you're a Christian because everybody else wear, you know, short shorts and pants. So if you were wearing a dress, you're a Christian. And those were those physical things that people see. But for us, we see the spiritual things that people do. We do it out of love. What would cause someone to get up on a Saturday morning instead of sleeping in to come to the church a Friday evening put together to give out food to people that you don't know that don't even say thank you to you? What would cause someone to go through each month to run the numbers because we got to give reports so we can get the money. We got to give the time. You drive your car to go pick up the food, bring it here, set it up. What would cause someone to do that? Because of love. You think that love comes from the physical? That's the spiritual love from Jesus Christ. What would cause someone to do certain things for people that don't look like them, that don't sound like them? Because of love. Because of that new, that newness in Christ. And so we have to put on the new self, which are those different things. Emotionally, mentally, we have to put on those. So Paul is telling you about the old way of life, where we've been. He's telling them about the things that they used to do. And he said, no, put on this newness, this new self. People said, man, you, you know, people, you go back home and people say, man, you don't change on us. Hey, we're going, we're going, I remember the first time after I started committing to the church and I got more involved and I went back to Savannah, Georgia and a good friend of mine from Honduras hit me up and she said, I'm coming to get you. And I said, where are we going? And she said, we're going salsa. And I said, I'm sorry, I got church tomorrow morning and uh, that's just not really my thing anymore. And she said, what are you doing in Colorado? Are you smoking that thing over there in Colorado? Because, man, we used to always go salsa. I said, I know, but I kind of changed partner. And at first it was a struggle for me because I didn't know how to tell her, you know, hey, the club scene is just not my thing anymore. I still dance salsa. I put that out of the house and I, I get my step in. I still do, you know, but it's just not at the club. Because, see, I learned. I used to invite people to church while I'm in the club dancing. And I never understood, man, nobody come to church with me. This don't make no sense. But then one morning somebody said something to me. It was after four or five in the morning, and we had just left the club, and we were eating breakfast. And I said, hey, you want me to pick up for church? And the person said, man, you're crazy. We, what time are we going to sleep? I said, you just go home now, take a shower, go to sleep, and get up, and I'll be there at 10 o'clock. Services at 11. We got time. And I said, no, bro, you got to pick one or the other. Either we're going to go clubbing or we're going to go to church. If we go to church, we're not going clubbing. And then it hit me. It dawned on me in that moment. How am I trying to soul win? trying to share the gospel of someone when my life and yours is on the same path. There's no change in me. So if I'm going to do this, I'll do these things, and it's not transforming my life, how is it going to transform your life? What is it going to do for me? And in that moment, I begin to make change. 
and I began to change some things. The first few months was hard because I tell you what, I love putting on some Mark Anthony or some uh, Oscar De Leon. I love putting that up and turn that bad boy up. I love it. But I have to also realize that my witness was being tainted by me being there because I'm trying to share the gospel with you, but we're at the same place doing the same thing. So where is the change? Where is the change? And the last thing I want to share with us this morning is put on the new behaviors, those new behaviors as the new creature. Put on the behaviors of a new creature. Let's go to Colossians 3, 15 and 12. Colossians chapter 3, it says, Therefore, as God chosen people, holy and dearly loved, close yourself with compassion. See, this is where you begin to put on those things, spiritual things, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bear each other and forgive one another. If any of you have grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgive you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all in perfect unity. It's when we begin to put on kindness, we be more kind. And, uh, you know, I had, that's something I had to learn, to not let my sarcasm hurt people. Because sometimes we say stuff sarcastically, and it's a joke, and it's hurtful. And so, you know, learn to be kind, to be humble in humility, to be patient with folks, you know. Uh, folks had to be patient with me. God had to be God patient with you right now as he continues to allow you to work and navigate through this life and he begins to bring stuff. He's patient with you. So learn to be patient with others and to bear others up and to forgive. To forgive. Christian people hurt Christian people. Christians hurt Christians. That's just a reality. And we have to learn to forgive. It's hard. I say, man, I thought you were saved. That's the first thing we go to. I thought you were saved. How can you do this to me? But we have to learn to forgive one another. And so we have to put on the, put on the behaviors of a new creation, living as those made alive in Christ by setting our mind on the things above. Pastor Jeff talked about the gospel, sharing the gospel earlier. And he said, you know, when, we, when, when that becomes our focus, is the gospel message it begins to transform because you and I, we can't save nobody. We cannot save nobody. We can bring them to the cross. We can push them down at the cross. We can tie them to the cross. But unless they accept what the cross meant by Jesus dying on the cross, unless they accept Jesus Christ for themselves, they're not going to be saved. They're not. And so here in verse 12, Paul said, let me said, put on, here is the instruction us to Put on these things. Start some Bible study. Get in a journey group. Get around other believers, especially during this time. Begin to be encouraged and lifted up. Begin to step out on the faith. Begin to allow God to use you. Begin to do different things. Volunteer at the clinic or the pharmacy. Come to the food pantry one of these Saturdays on the third Saturday of every month, and you can see how we are showing love through those things. You know, you'd be surprised. How your life begins to change as you begin to look to Jesus and allow him to make the change and you can put on that new self and you can be that new creation those behaviors those change you're not lying anymore you're telling the truth you're taking responsibility for your actions instead of giving this long twisted story when you know it's not true just said man I'm sorry I'm sorry See, when we become a new creature, a new creation, when we begin to put on the new self, our values change. Our ambitions change. See, our values and ambitions and all those things change. It's about you want to share the gospel. It's like when you go to that good restaurant and the food is good. And you want to put it on Facebook. You want to text everybody, man, you got to go try this place out. There's some good food right here, man. This is good stuff right here. It's the same way with the gospel. See, when you've come and you've experienced Jesus Christ and you know because you know that he is doing a work in your life and you begin to see the change in your life, you want to tell someone, if he does it for me, he can do it for you. And it's the same way this morning. He is still 
in the transformation business. He is still trans um, transforming lives. All you got to do is step out on faith this morning and believe and ask God to renew your mind. You see, once our mind is renewed, we can begin to see those old things and see they're no good for us. And then we can easily begin to take them off and begin to put on the things of God. We begin to put on the things of a new creation. So this morning, as we get ready to close here, we have seen that we have to have our thinking continually being renewed. It's not a one process thing. It's not just we just do it one time and that's it. It's a day by day. He said, take up your cross and follow me. You have to take up that cross every morning when your eyes open and you take your first breath, wake, waking. You have to take up that cross. Every morning you have to take up that cross. You can't only take up your cross on Sunday morning because it's going to feel like, man, what is this thing I'm dragging with me? It's not, it's, 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 just, it's just reality. If you pick it up just on Sunday morning, it's like, man, what is this? But you got to pick it up daily. Because if you only pick it up on Sunday or certain times, it will be so easy for you just to take it and just throw it away and say, you know, I can't bother with this. This is too much. I can't, de I can't do this. But when you begin to do it daily, I'm not going to say it gets easier. It just e gets easy knowing that God is with you and he's carrying you through it. And he's the one that's carrying you and not you carrying yourself. So this week, I just pray that you will prayerfully examine your own life. What can you do to get rid of things that you know are the old self as a believer? And here's a, the, the toughest question. Are you willing to make change to those things? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves as we desire to take off and put on. As we desire to have those new behaviors of a new creature in our lives. Am I willing to give up these things? Am I willing to put these things off, to lay them aside? Are you willing to change that behavior? Ask the Holy Spirit this morning to help you to be willing to change. If you desire change, God is already waiting. He's just waiting on you to step out. He's just waiting on you to come forward and say, Lord, what must I do? And he will do the rest. Amen. Let's pray.